In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the line integral of a vector function. And in this particular problem, we've been given the function f of x, y, z is equal to sine of x times i plus cosine y times j plus x, z times k. And we've been given a vector function r of t is equal to t cubed i plus t squared j plus t k. And as usual, we've been told that when we have this parameter value t, we want to stay between 0 and 1. As a reminder, I've written the formula here for a line integral. This will look different just because it's in vector notation, but it's the same idea as finding a line integral over a curve C. So the reason it's different is because instead of finding the line integral over some curve C, we're instead finding the line integral over the vector function R of T. So we're kind of treating this vector function R of T as the curve c, and then this is our function f of x, y, z, like our function would be in a normal line integral problem. And just as with a normal line integral problem, what we want to do is redefine our function f of x, y, z in terms of t instead of in terms of x, y, and z. And we can see that because in our integral, we're taking f of r of t. So what we're going to be doing is plugging in values to this function here for f to put this equation, this function, in terms of t instead of in terms of x, y, and z. We're also going to need the derivative of our function r of t, and we're going to be plugging that in as well. So this part of our integral here is the same as, for a normal line integral, the big square root of the sum of the squares of the derivatives, and then we have this dt portion here. And this portion is where we plug in parametric equations for x, y, and z in terms of t to get f in terms of t instead of x, y, and z. So let's just go ahead and take a look at this. We're going to follow the same process that we would for a normal line integral, except that we've just got vector notation. So that normal process means that we look at this vector function here, r of t, and we want to use this to find equations for x, y, and z in terms of t. Well, of course, all we do there is take the coefficients on i, j, and k and set those equal to x, y, and z respectively. So we get x is equal to t cubed, the coefficient on our i term y is equal to t squared, the coefficient on j, and z is equal to t, which is the coefficient on k. We're also going to need derivatives of our equations x, y, and z in terms of t. So the derivative of x in terms of t, which of course is called dx dt, is going to be equal to the derivative here, 3t squared. So taking the derivative of t cubed gives us 3t squared. The derivative of y in terms of the variable t is going to be equal to 2t. And the derivative of z in terms of t is going to be equal to 1. Our next step is to use these values, plug them into our function for f, to get this function in terms of t instead of x, y, and z. So since we have values for x, y, and z, we can plug them in here, x, y, and z, to get this in terms of t. So what that looks like is f of r of t, because we're taking the values from our vector function r of t and plugging them into f, that's going to be equal to sine, instead of sine of x, since we said x was equal to t cubed, we get sine of t cubed, and we multiply that by i. Then we get plus cosine, instead of cosine of y, we'll do cosine of t squared, so cosine of t squared times j. And then plus, here we have x times z. So x is t cubed and z is t. t cubed times t is t to the fourth, so t to the fourth times k. Now notice we already have f of r of t, which we need here for our integral. We know that a and b are 0 and 1 because it was given to us in our problem. So all we need is r prime of t, and of course we can find that just by taking the derivative of the function r of t. So we'll say r prime of t is going to be equal to and again, when we take the derivative of a vector function, we leave i, j, and k alone, and we just take the derivative of each of the coefficients. So t cubed is going to become 3t squared times i. t squared is going to become 2t, so plus 2t times j. And t is going to become 1, so plus 1k, or just plus k. Now we have everything we need to plug into our integral formula. So our integral formula here is going to become the integral from 0 to 1, so 0 to 1, of f of r of t. So we have that here, and we're going to get sine of t cubed times i 
plus cosine of t squared times j plus t to the fourth times k. And we're going to multiply that by the derivative of our vector function, which we know to be 3t squared i plus 2t times j plus k. And then we have our dt notation here, so we put dt on the end. Now it's just a matter of simplifying this integral to get our final answer. And because we're multiplying, all we need to do when we have vector notation like this and we're multiplying, we have sine of t cubed i times 3t squared i. We don't multiply every term by every term, we just multiply the coefficients in front of the i terms together, and then add to that the product of the coefficients on the j terms, etc. So here's what we get. The integral from 0 to 1, sine of t cubed times 3t squared is just 3t squared sine t cubed, and we can drop the i at this point. Cosine of t squared times 2t is plus 2t cosine t squared drop in the j, and then t to the fourth times 1 is just plus t to the fourth, we'll drop the k, and we have dt. Now what we'll do is break this integral into three separate integrals, so we get the integral from 0 to 1 of 3t squared sine of t cubed dt, plus the integral from 0 to 1 of 2t cosine of t squared dt, plus the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the fourth dt. Now we can tackle each of these separately. And for the first two, we're going to need u substitution, but it'll be an easy one. Since we have two substitutions to make, let's use the variables c and d. So for this one, we'll say c is equal to t cubed, the value inside our sine function here. That means dc is going to be equal to 3t squared dt. And we can leave this as is because notice we have a 3t squared dt, so we'll just substitute directly for dc. For this one, we'll say d is equal to t squared, which means that dd, the derivative of d, is equal to 2t times dt. And now we can make some substitutions. So from here, we'll get the integral from 0 to 1. Notice here that we have 3t squared dt is equal to dc. Well, we have 3t squared dt, so that's going to become dc. Sine of t cubed, we said that t cubed was equal to c, so we're just going to get sine of c times dc. For our second integral here, we'll get the integral from 0 to 1. Here we said that dd, the derivative of d, was equal to 2t dt, and you can see we have 2t and dt, so we'll just plug in dd directly, and we'll get cosine of d times dd, like this. And then we have plus, and we can take the integral of this directly, we'll say 1 fifth t to the fifth evaluated on the interval 0 to 1. Now the integral of sine of c will be negative cosine of c, so we'll get negative cosine of c evaluated on the interval 0 to 1. Then we're going to add to that the integral of cosine of d. Well, the integral of cosine is sine, so we get plus sine of d evaluated on the interval 0 to 1, plus 1 fifth t to the fifth evaluated on the interval 0 to 1. Now what we can do, because we have the same interval for each of these, is we can consolidate into one function and evaluate the whole thing over the interval 0 to 1, but we also need to back substitute before we do that. So we said c was equal to t cubed, so we're going to get negative cosine of t cubed. Then we're going to say plus sine of d, and we know that d is t squared, so plus sine of t squared, and then plus 1 fifth t to the fifth, evaluated on 0 to 1, the whole thing together. Now to evaluate over the interval, of course, we just plug in the upper limit of integration first. So we'll plug in 1 first, and we'll get 1 cubed is just 1. Cosine of 1, we can't really simplify, so we get negative cosine of 1. 1 squared gives us 1. Sine of 1 can't simplify, so we'll do plus sine of 1. And then here, 1 to the fifth gives us 1, times 1 fifth is plus 1 fifth. Now we'll subtract whatever we get when we plug in our lower limit of integration, 0. So plugging in 0, we get cosine of 0, which is 1, so negative 1 there. Sine of 0 is 0, so we get plus 0. 
and 0 to the 5th times 1 fifth is of course 0 also, so we get plus 0 there. Now we can reorder things a little bit. We'll put sine before cosine, and we'll get sine of 1 minus cosine of 1 plus 1 fifth minus a negative 1 is plus 1. Obviously our zeros go away. All we need to do is consolidate our constants. So instead of saying plus 1, we'll say plus 5 over 5 to get a common denominator here. And our final answer is sine of 1 minus cosine of 1 plus 1 fifth plus 5 fifths is plus 6 over 5. And this value we just found, of course, is the area of one side of the curtain that lies underneath the function f of x, y, z and over the vector function r of t.